Other channels do unboxings, but here at Curiosities of Natural History, we take dead snakes out of bin bags. I'm sure there's probably loads of ways to do it, but this is an example of my no rush, no smell method of preparing a specimen to be skeletonized by domestic beetles. It works for me and can easily be scaled up or down depending on what size specimen you're dealing with. I never measured this adult female boa constrictor in life, but I doubt she'd grown much in death by the time I measured her at 6 feet and 1 inch. I did have the foresight though to weigh her before starting the process and she came in at about 3.5 kilos, which is about 7 and 3 quarter pounds. After the specimen is defrosted, the first thing we've got to do is remove the skin. With snakes that's quite easy, just cut down the belly and peel the skin off. Some trimming is required around the head, but that's quite intuitive and easy to do with a sharp scalpel. Domestics would eat the skin, but with a specimen this beautiful, it really is a shame to waste it. Of course the guts have to be taken out as well, because they would very quickly rot and spoil the colony. At this stage you can trim some flesh off if you want a faster result, but I don't mind how long it takes to skeletonise a specimen, so leave it all on as beetle food. If your specimen is particularly big, it's better to cut it into manageable pieces and prepare them separately. The specimen will be quite wet at this stage, and this is where the no stink element comes in. The trick is to remove as much water as possible as the bacteria that would decompose a carcass and cause a smell need moisture to thrive. First step for me is to pat dry with paper towels and then give it a blast with a hairdryer to take the surface moisture out. At this stage the specimen is floppy and can be posed if you want. The benefit of using domestics to clean the skeleton over some other methods is that most of the connecting tissues remain so there isn't usually much sticking bones back together required. I've taken advantage of that here and gone for a coiled up resting pose as that is quite natural and probably easier to display the finished result rather than being stretched out. This isn't a final thing though and if you change your mind you can moisten a specimen at any stage, repose it and dry it out again and it will be fine. As you can see there really isn't anything complicated here and it's soon on to the next step which is just as simple. Again there's probably a load of ways to do this but I use boxes of various sizes and for the bigger specimens this state-of-the-art dehydrating facility slash old wardrobe in a garage. The trick here is to bathe the specimen in a continuous stream of warm dry air. The tape over the doors helps keep air in and the gap at the bottom and top work together like a flue, drawing cold air in through the bottom which is then warmed and rises to escape through the top, hopefully loaded with moisture from the specimen. Inside, and looking a bit like a vision of hell, is an old-fashioned incandescent light bulb and a heat mat that provide the dry heat and a fan to move the warmed air around the specimen. I don't think it matters what the temperature of the air is, as long as it's warmer than the ambient temperature outside the box and moving. Weather can be a complicating issue here and I do anything of any size in the winter to take advantage of cooler outside temperatures and the absence of flies. Small mammals and birds will dry quickly in any weather in a suitably sized box with a lamp and heat mat, but if I wanted to do anything larger and live somewhere milder and more humid, I think I'd be looking for an alternative technique. Really small things like mice and very small birds can just be popped on a heat mat and they'll be done in a few hours. The time it takes to dry out will depend on the size of the specimen, how much flesh you leave on it, its shape and the way you manage the temperature and airflow. A week or so should see you write on something of this size. You'll know it's done because the specimen becomes rock hard. Once it's fully dried it will last for years without further treatment as long as you keep it dry. At this stage there's little to no smell because the odour of rotting is causing by the decomposing bacteria which you've prevented through the drying process. The next and final step is to pop the dehydrated specimen in with the beetles and let them do their thing. They prefer moist food to rock hard months old snake flesh and I do give them fresh meat to supplement their diet so it'll take them a little while but I'm not in a rush. The whole colony gets stuck in from first in star larvae all the way up to adults. Each take their tiny mouthfuls as they chomp away at the flesh and you'll see the skeleton gradually emerge. A well managed colony has no smell at all even when it's working on something as big as this providing it's kept properly dried and kept dry. After a period of time that's largely dependent on how many beetles you have the skeleton will be picked clean. This is the boa skeleton as it is now, not quite done but not a million miles off and I hope you get the idea of what we're trying to achieve. While there is still some flesh on the skeleton you can see the muscle fibres running lengthwise along the body that the snake contracts to move or grip something. You can see the lower levels have been eaten first and that's because the specimen was partially buried under the wood shavings I use as substrate. The beetles do venture above ground though to have a nibble from the top. And that really is all there is to getting to the beetle cleaned skeleton stage. There are more steps you can take to degrease, white and amount of skeleton once it's clean, but we'll save that for another video. 
possibly involving the reticulated python I have in the freezer. I haven't quite decided what to do with that yet, but it's over 10 feet long, so we'll make an impressive skeleton one day. Anyway, I hope that was vaguely interesting to somebody, so it just remains for me to say thank you for watching, and until next time, keep curious.